somewhere. All right, uh, item number two in of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Moore. Is that Morio? Second by Councillor Friesen. Resolve that the agenda for the August 1st, 2017 regular meeting of council be received. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, item number three. Motion moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Sacco. Resolved that the minutes of the July 18th regular meeting of council be adopted as received. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, item number four, delegations and hearings. Uh, public hearing for conditional use application. Conditional use application number two, 2017. Uh, the purpose of the hearing is to hear representation for or against the following conditional use application. Uh, to allow the operation of a heavy duty mechanic shop and MPI safety inspection station within a ML light industrial zone on the property located at lot three, block two, plan 2717, 11 Vivian Street. The requirements of section 169 of the Planning Act have been adhered to. Uh, to request that any person making representation to the hearing state their name and civic address. And nobody here. Does any councillors have any comments on it or any administration comments on it? No? Okay. Well, then upon all hearing all persons present, so I'll adjourn the hearing. We'll move on to the resolution moved by Councillor Morio, second by Councillor Sackle. Resolved that the conditional use application number 2, 2017, to allow the operation of a heavy duty mechanic shop and MPI safety inspection station within an ML industrial light zone on the property located at lot 3, block 2, plan 2717, 11 Vivian Street, be approved. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. All right, move on to item number five, correspondence. Uh, we have a letter from Intergovernmental Affairs about a one-time top-up transfer to the gas fund, which amounts to about 2,500 bucks for us. So I guess it's uh, better than nothing, but we'll just add that to, uh, to the gas tax reserve, I would think. Any uh, comments on that? Okay, we'll move on to uh, item number six, 6.1. Proposal to subdivide lot 16, 17, 18, block 29, plan 2633. Um, motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Fries, and resolved that the proposed subdivision of lots 16, 17, 18, block 29, plan 2633, Dauphin Land Titles Office, and numbered by Manitoba Municipal Government, Community and Regional Planning, Branch as file number 445517-7382 be hereby approved subject to one, a conditional use order being obtained providing for the use of bare land condominium within the central commercial zone, and two, a condominium or development agreement between the developers and the town of Swan River. Okay, any discussion on this? Uh, what is this? This is the uh, condominium development behind Cook and Cook Insurance, mm -hmm. and um, they have applied for a <coughs> subdivision, but um, they they also have to um, 
uh, before it's approved, they have to have a conditional use um, application come in uh, for their land and condominiums, and, um, and they have to have a development agreement um, in place with the town for things like garbage pickup and, and utility. Have you, have, has administration discussed with them the development agreement? They're fully aware of what that will contain? Uh, we haven't had any meetings with the owner group yet. Okay. It wouldn't be anything too surprising. Okay. And so they'll have to make a conditional use application yet, so that will be coming yes. in the future? Yes. Okay. I'll, I'll pass the information over to uh, Mr. Lewicki so that he can contact Mr. Morio, um, this is not the first time I've saw this, but uh, it's kind of putting the cart in front of or behind the course of the backs. The building's almost done and we get this proposal now to subdivide this. Um, I guess they went ahead with construction anticipating they would get a, a rubber stamp from council on this and I think we need to get the message out to developers that some of these things need to be all done before they actually start development. Um, so you're like withhold like a building permit? Yeah, like with all the building permit or something, because like if we vote this down tonight, where does that leave them? They won't be able to subdivide these. Yeah, they won't be able to turn them into condominiums. Yeah. They, I guess they took the risk of us it's turning it down, and maybe they just end up with apartments or something. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so I guess that, that was a risk they were willing to take. Yeah, so, but this it's not the first time I've seen some of the developers do that, where we're uh, expected to rubber stamp some of these applications and. Uh, one of these times we will have time to deny it and we may have some upset developers so I think we need to communicate to these individuals that uh, maybe, maybe start putting all the paperwork completed before they actually put the shell to the ground. So. Any other comments? I agree with uh, Councilor Morio. I think it's an important concept. With the risk they take, uh, we'll see what happens with the council. That come back, or that message, I think, should go back to the developer and say, perhaps this paperwork should be done ahead of time. Okay, I think uh, I think the onus is on all of us when we're talking to our developer friends to to make sure that this is out there. Perhaps a note to the developing world, if there is such an entity, do they have a parent body that all developers belong to? Ten in, in the community, and we can drop a note to them. Be prepared. Yeah, Ron, Ron might have an idea. Drop just remind the rest of, of doing some of these things after the fact instead of before. Mm -hmm. um, in 2018, there would be a list of the new home builders. Mm -hmm. Oh, with the uh, warranty thing. Yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Okay, we'll move on to item 7.1, Superintendent of Works Report. Uh, you guys all have a copy of Derek's report. Any questions for Derek? Just uh, one question, uh, Derek. Uh, a timeline on uh, 11th? 13th. 13th, that's uh, they, they hooked up the water today, so uh, we'll be shocking that system and chlorinating the water line so the water will be turned off in about, I'm going to guess, five to seven days. And uh, the road should be done in less than that. Could we get another week or so? Do you have a, a, a barrier on 12th? I think there's a hose going under. You've got a, a, a stuff on. Have you ever considered maybe putting a little sign on there? I know it's there because I fly off. I come over and forget it's there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my wife chastises me. Perhaps a sign that's sort of crossing that it, because it's quite high. Yeah, because we hooked on today, it can actually be removed. Perfect. They just got to uh, get the guys over there. Now Now that they've hooked into the water, there's no more guys in the trench. Those guys will be landscaping, taking stuff like that down. So Perfect. that should happen in the next few days. That's better, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So the, the majority of the delay in that project would be attributable to the issues found on Ross and then a little bit of rain we had in July? It was the this collapsed storm sewer, yeah, and then with the rain, caused delays, yeah. And then there was a a back grade on the sewer line that uh, 25 meters had to be replaced. 
Okay, any other questions? Oh, Councillor Moore? Um, we had talked about this a bit last year and stuff like that about an advanced green or turning lane on Main Street here at the corner of Quick Stop. And uh, did we ever get back a, like they were doing traffic talents and supposed to do, give us a report back as to why or why not they could not do it and stuff like that? Inquired with Mark Allard on that at that time. Uh, we did have a short conversation, but I basically we asked him if he would come up here. He said he would and explain uh, the reasons why it didn't go forward. Yeah. So they were going to do that. They had indicated or you made the message because there wasn't enough room there to put another lane and stuff like that. But there's an advanced green right here at this intersection. Yeah. So. I don't buy the story that you need turning lanes at the other end if you can put one here without turning lanes. So right. Yeah, like, and I believe the uh, business accesses were one, if I can remember. So it would be if we could follow up on that, it's like sure. yesterday almost one cycle of light change. I almost witnessed three accidents of people getting hit by going around the cars. And it's not so. <coughs> How's the uh, six seven? Oh, sorry, Councilor Sato. Oh, go ahead. No. I was just going to ask how the 6th Avenue project was going. The storm sugar? No, the, the station. Oh, uh, they're just working on foundation, the piles are in, and it's basically they're waiting until all their materials are here, and then we haven't received their critical shutdown schedule, so when we get that, they can't go without telling the town exactly what's happening, so we have to have that uh, discussion and uh, when that's going to happen and when that is. Mm -hmm. Just a comment slash, I guess, question a little bit. I know we talked briefly about a uh, fenced-in dog park area at the Ag Ground. We were going to talk to the Ag Society. If anybody still thinks it's a great idea, I, I suggest that they drive through or by there right now. I think once we designate that or have it as a dog park, like right now that whole area is trampled which rightfully so, it's full of horses, and there's piles of hay and horse manure, which I, I don't think will disappear immediately. And once it is gone, I still think there'll be reminiscent of smell and, and maybe not an ideal location, per se, for this, because this would probably take away from the dog park, I would assume, for a month of the year, where you're going to have people angry at us now that we designated as a dog park, and then now they're going to have to be dodging horse manure and, and different things and it's, you know, if, if they ever try to beautify it, I'm sure that's all going to have to be, you know, kind of taken down. So I'm starting to think that maybe it's not the greatest idea. I have looked sure. into, uh, just in spare time, I guess, not a lot of time has been spent on it, but I have asked for quotes from two different companies to put in the entrance pens. On, on something that's existing like that, but also to put up a fence on the Old Town Trailer Court property. Well, that's not a bad spot. So just to, like I'll, I'll be just presenting that to Council as option one, option two, uh, contractor A, contractor B, you know, basically that site, pros and cons, like shutting it down during rodeo, having the Egg Society take care of all liability and insurance and everything because it is their property as opposed to our own, you know, basically higher capital cost, but it's ours as opposed to no capital cost. And we have no say. But there is, we are working on that just to give council a... Because well, I, I, I had talked to Julie um, last year on the, the old trailer park regarding the, the feasibility of that into the dog park, but we didn't get very... Or I didn't pursue it any much further due to the capital cost of having to fencing and entrancing and finishing that's, remediating. Maybe that's where that came from. Because I remember a discussion mm -hmm. about that property. It was on my back burner list. <coughs> okay, Councillor Friesen. I did talk to a few people at the Ag Society and they think it's a great place to put it as long as they don't have any responsibility for it. They know it's fenced in. You know, it's big enough to have a run, but if push comes to shove, I think they'd rather skip three weeks of not having it to not having anything. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing right now, so maybe they would take it, 
and skip three weeks as opposed to nothing or if this other place would be feasible, good. Councillor White, will uh, the exercise be taking that to a vote for all the board members to talk about the possibility of going for it? No. You're not even going to put it on the agenda? Well, I will if I tell them, ask them. Ask them, yeah. I think it's, it's unfair. You can talk to the wrong two in the Ag Society. They may say it's great or they may say it's not. I talked to a couple of members. I haven't taken it directly to a meeting mm -hmm. as such. I think we're a little busy. Yeah, yeah. I, have no, I don't think it's going to rush it either, <laughs> personally. Mm -hmm. But I mean, if, if, they, if we've got the feeling of the Ag Society, would you support it or not? And the discussion, and we get the numbers and, and take a look at good comments that uh, Councillor South and see what happens in the next three or four days, see how long that will make it. But without the Ag Society's formal approval, I wave a vote, we can't make a move. Or I suspect the approval of the neighbors over there to some degree. Okay, any other questions for Derek on his report? Hearing none, we'll, uh, motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Sapp, resolved that the Superintendent Works report be received. All in favor? Okay, you guys all have the report for the uh, fire department for July. Any discussion or questions on that? Just looks like a very busy month for them in the town of Swan River. Yeah. Unfortunately, a number of structure fires. That's... Okay, motion moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Friesen. Resolved that the fire department report for July 2017 be received. All in favor? Carried. Okay, you guys all have the attached admin meetings for July 20th and July 27th. Um, any questions to Julie on those? Councilor Morio? Um, I see on your July 27th uh, report there, Julie, that you formed with Canada Revenue in regards to a uh, letter received from the Charities Doctorate. Um, any news or development on that front? What they told me that was that um, they haven't signed an officer yet to my case, so that I needed to wait to hear from them. So as soon as it's uh, assigned an officer, then someone will either call me with questions or send me a letter. And our, and our case is, is I was the questions that we about, had? Yeah, the questions about the, There's no investigation of us? No, no. Okay, no, I, I, I just, just had, thought maybe I missed something. I just had some questions, okay. yeah. Okay. Uh, Councillor Sackle? Uh, I just have two from the July 27th. There's Julie. Uh, it says, met with a taxpayer Friday morning to discuss titled owners and mailing of tax bills. What happens is um, if there's, uh, say, three owners on a title, they each get a copy of the tax notice. So um, a lady had come to talk to me because both of her kids are on the title. And every year they get, you know, it's an annual thing and, and it surprises them. They get this bill in the mail and they're immediately shocked, you know, thinking like, why am I getting this bill? Because their mom pays for her taxes. So that she just came to talk to me to see if it was necessary, if they had to each be mailed a copy. And um, I know the act states that every title owner has to, uh, you know, get a copy, but I'm, I'm talking with municipal government, just trying to figure out if we can do it Wait for her. Uh, or like if she gets the original and just stamp the other two as a copy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure them. there's something that we can do so that. Or a note yeah. on it. But that's what that was about. Okay. Yeah. The second one I had was is we spoke with Albert Kwan about soup kitchen in the town. Um, yes, he had heard that someone had started up a soup kitchen, and he just um, wanted to know if the town had heard anything about it and um, I had heard that too yeah and um, the person that started up the soup kitchen has done all the the proper um, procedures uh, contact public health and getting permits in place and so it's all good so I phoned Albert back and told where him. is it located it is located um, in um, the, the laundromat building there yeah. there's no sort of inspection that had to be Oh yeah, pub, um, public health is 
is aware of it and he's um, he's been in contact with the public health inspector and getting everything in order. Yeah, I talked to the public so health they inspector. Actually open already? I'm not positive on that. I don't know for sure. Do you think you'd be allowed to serve until mm -hmm. all regulations are met? Yeah. I see you had some meetings with uh, liquor and gaming. Is that regarding anything in particular? Um, no, I just had some questions about significant events oh. and our resolution that we pass, and also community events. You know, when uh, people um, or organizations get permits to serve liquor, say at the baseball diamonds and stuff like that. I just had some questions on what we need to do as far as council. And and no, it was good, and he was in town because he was getting a permit in place for the rodeo and everything. Yeah. Okay, and oh, Councillor Friedman? No, oh. no. This is a comment on him. <coughs> but I won't. On the him? Mm -hmm. that is. On him, on Mr. Pichet. Oh. Any other uh, questions for Julie? Hearing none, uh, no resolution. Well, I guess we're not going to receive your minutes or your meeting. Or your, uh, meeting. Yeah, we don't usually have a resolution. Oh, we don't? Ones. No. Okay. All right, then we move on to council member and CAO reports. Councilor Sapple. There's not too many, uh, not too many committee meetings. Uh, the only thing I'll report on, I guess, uh, kudos to everybody in, in the valley to uh, make the Northwest Roundup another successful event. I'm always amazed every year to see this you know it's a good community event it draws so many people from out of town it seems to be so well organized that to me it always looks like it goes off without a hitch but there's obviously so many people that volunteer their time and I know Councillor Friesen made a comment she started Monday and she just finished today so thank you to her and all her hard work and thank you to all uh, all everybody in the town staff and other councillors that put together a nice float that we had in there I was unable to take part in that. I was commanding my own. That's all I have to report. Councillor Friesen. Thank you to uh, Councillor Sockle for dousing us with water <laughs> before we yeah. started. <laughs> it was, it was, it it was quite cooling. And uh, uh, I really did start last Monday, and we finished yesterday. And I do it because I love it. And, uh, the volunteers are all very good. We have some really hardworking people, and uh, like you say, it went off well. There's like, always glitches, but we managed to get through them too. Lots of complaints, but we managed to get through them too. Um, and then today was uh, Communities in Bloom Judging Day. Um, we had Hugh Skinner and um, Kathy Scallop. He was from Rodland, and uh, Kathy's from Winnipeg, and uh, they came up, and we picked them up at 15 and Super 8, and we toured town all day, and uh, Heather Nielsen from Rise came with us, and Stacy Trindle, and they learned a lot of stuff today. You don't realize it until you drive around and you see all the stuff that we do have to offer, and I think our judges would be really impressed. And I just dropped them off, and now they'll spend three hours evaluating us and giving us a mark. And hopefully, we can come up with another five rooms. Um, the seminar this year is in the Peace Gardens, and there's two or three of us would like to go in September, but you know, uh, we'll see if we can get that authorized at another meeting. That's all. Okay, Councillor White. In the less hectic week, plural, I had along with Councillor Sato had the opportunity to attend the SPL's Food Product Lumber's 75th anniversary uh, celebration. And I think what the philanthropy of that particular industry is fantastic for our town. And at the same time, they wrote a check for $20,000 to the new uh, committee re replacing, potentially replacing Ducks Unlimited. So. It was a good afternoon, evening. 
I thank uh, Councilor Friesen for inviting me to, and a bunch of us to ride on the float. And it was quite exciting, and today uh, I was invited also to attend the lunch. So I had the pleasure of bringing greetings from our council of uh, the wonderful work that the uh, Communities in Boone Executive do, and their their judges do, and Councilor Friesen for organizing it all. So uh, not a busy month, but uh, wonderful things happening in our community, again, by the volunteers. Councilor Morio, um, first off, congratulations to Councilor White for his reappointment to the PMHA, uh, PMH board. Thank you. It's, it's there. Um, as on the parade, I was on the parade float with the rest of the councillors that were around there, so it was very good to see, uh, like Councilor Sacco um, mentioned, that a lot of the people that come from outside the valley, they can, it's amazing, 150 some floats that stretch like a, almost a mile and a half long and last over an hour. People are just amazed at such a long parade. The first float is done and the last float hasn't even moved yet. So it's uh, something to be seen and proud that the Valley can do that. So, um, And I also had a couple inquiries from um, people from within the town and outside the town regarding uh, new homes and where they can purchase RTM homes. So I forwarded those on to the developers and contractors. Here, so, so there's definitely uh, people are interested in new homes, especially with the interest rates starting to go back up. It's looking to buy now before it goes too far. So um, it's good to see that the developers are actually have a strong interest on uh, people looking to buy new homes in the valley, so or in the town. That's all I have for you for Kalinar, uh, Ms. Spalio. <laughs> I, um, I also spoke with someone, I had an email about someone interested in starting up a business in town here. Um, it wasn't stated what type of business, but I provided the um, property tax incentive program uh, for that person and also provided contact information for the Chamber of Commerce and our economic development officer. And I also spoke with uh, Calvin Campo about the MSPA signing. Um, it looks like it'll be August 16th at the Friendship Center, probably around 11 a.m., but I will confirm that um, once he has confirmed for sure with his council. Um, I've uh, drafted up the uh, special services bylaws um, and everything that goes along with them um, so that we'll get those started in September. Are they on, on it already? No, we're not yet. No. We'll have plenty of time to look at them before they come to the meeting? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, super, thank you. Yeah. And um, that's about it for me. Okay, and I didn't do anything that hasn't already been talked about, but mm -hmm. it was excellent rodeo weekend. Well, I haven't remember going with it rain in a long time. Okay, uh, we'll move on to item 8.1, checklisting. Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sack, resolved that uh, accounts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts from check number 20974 to 21035 for a total of $125,748.43 and two payroll account from check number 4024 to 4037 for a total of 141,970. Any uh, discussion, any questions to Julie on the checks? Councilor Morio? Uh, check number 0021034 to is it check Properties. Is that Rosarek? Rosarek, the second last one on the list. That uh, was property tax incentive program check. Okay. Any other questions, Julie? Hearing none, we'll uh, call a question. All in favor? Opposed? Very Okay. Item 8.2 to appoint signing officers. Uh, 
Moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sack. Resolved that signing officer for the Town of Swan River be Mayor Glenn McKenzie or Deputy Mayor Lance Jacobson and Chief Administrative Officer Julie Fothergill or Chief Financial Officer Terence Ganita. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. You guys all have a copy of the uh, May 2017 financial statements. Any questions regarding those? Everything seems to be on track. Okay. Motion moved by Councillor Friesen, second by Councillor Sackers. All the financial statements for the month ended in May 2007 be adopted as received. All in favor? Carried. Item 8.4, motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that the following building permit applications be received. Uh, Tracy Santo, 302 Parkview Drive, fence, $6,000. Kevin Neely, 601 Main Street, signed, $600. Jody Vulcan, 11 Vivian Street, signed, $300. Mike Campo, 225th Avenue South, fence, $4,000. Erwin Dennis Chuck, 224 7th Avenue South, demolition, uh, no money. Formal Motors, 1550 Main Street, demo shed, no value. Uh, 7458879 Manitoba Limited, 218 8th Avenue South, sign, $150. Jerry and Patty Gattinger, 3 Parkway Drive, shed and deck, $7,500. Discussion? All in favor? Okay, motion moved by Councillor Sackle, second by Councillor Friesen, resolved that pursuant to section 152.3 of the Municipal Act, Council go into committee and close the meeting to the public. Discussion? All in favor? 